What is up you guys? It's your girl Cyan Taylor and welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a great week last week because I honestly know that I did, especially with my birthday celebration, which honestly was low key, but you best believe that we are going to go big or go home in 2021. A, it'll be my 30th birthday and B, hopefully we will be past the pandemic. So therefore we can get back to birthday celebrations and holiday celebrations and hopefully going out. My fingers are crossed, but anywho, let's get straight into it. I am ready to spill the tea on some of my favorite trending headlines and multicultural entertainment news from last week. And I must kick it off with my girl, the hot girl herself, Miss Megan Thee Stallion, giving her hotties a lot to celebrate this holiday season by dropping her debut album, Good News, in the early hours of Friday. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been waiting on this album to drop. And if you haven't taken time to listen to it, I'm gonna need you to put it on while you're cooking your turkey, your greens, your ham and your yams come Thursday. Look! Look! I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, greens, raw, raw, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rat, you Yes, honey, Megan gave us 17 tracks, including her previously released hits, Savage Remix, Girls in the Hood, and most recently released single, Don't Stop, and of course, Which the video, I honestly have to say, was straight fire. It had me twerking in the mirror, but my knees are so bad. Honestly, truly, that I have to just leave that one to Megan. I am going to practice, though. And post-pandemic, you better believe that I will be at the club in Los Angeles going off. And honey, I, I, I need to talk about the features on this album because they are off the charts. We've got the baby. City Girls, SZA, Lil Durk, and the surprise appearance for my dog, clearly. Big Sean, 2 Chains, and the queen of H-Town herself, Miss Beyonce Knowles. But let's get to the root of the album with the first song on the album, Shots Fired. Now, Megan started the album off with a bang by putting Toy Lanes on blast. And for those of you who don't know, he is currently facing felony assault charges for shooting Megan back in July at a house party in Hollywood Hills. Of course, he had a concealed weapon and she was injured due to this. And might I say that, whoa, I have to believe that she did not hold back on this. Megan really let it all out. She sampled some of Biggie Smalls' Hushacha, and she's really tearing Tori to shreds. I mean, this was her telling her truth, which of course, she's already been very vocal about the incident and exactly what went down that night. But let's take a listen to the track to hear exactly what Megan had to say. Now y'all in cahoots, okay. huh? You a puss in boots. You shot a 510, bitch, with a 22. Talking about bones and tendons like them bullets wouldn't pellets. A pussy nigga with a pussy gun in his fillet. Okay, he in the back seat and he keep calling me a bitch. We all know the shit I could have came back with. He talking about his followers, dollars, and goofy shit. I told him you're not popping, you just on the remix. Okay, what'd you think, S? Was that good? I think it was too because, you know, honestly, I'm gonna keep it at 100 and give you my opinion. She straight went off on that beat and on Tori. Honestly, I don't think that he'll ever recover from this and hopefully he won't because what he did was wrong and he needs to be held accountable. But we will take this up in the court of law. And moving on. I can't recap my favorite stories without mentioning the versus battle between Jeezy and of course Gucci Mane. Now for those of you who don't know, these two rappers have had a 15 year beef and honestly, I have to say that I was shocked when I heard that this would be going down. But nonetheless, the two played their hits for nearly two hours on Instagram Live. And I have to say, everybody and they mama was watching. I mean, I had friends from Philly to New York, all the way to California, tuning in for this very moment. 
We in Magic City. Let's get it. Turn up. This is round one of Gucci Man vs. Jesus. So here is what went down. Gucci Man kicked off the battle playing Round One, which was a diss track that he dropped back in 2005 aimed at Jeezy, which honestly for me had set the tone for what I thought was going to be, you know, possibly a rocky night. And if you thought things could get any more awkward, Gucci also performed Truth, which was another diss track that he dropped back in 2012. And I thought that tensions just could get even higher as the two compared real estate outfits and their overall influence. And honestly, I have to agree with Jeezy in the sense that buying half of Atlanta is probably the better option than having a whole bunch of jewelry because the real estate, the equity is only going to go up, especially if you're in neighborhoods that are booming. But in the end, the two let bygones be bygones and perform Icy together. And for those of you who are clueless to their bad blood, Icy was a track that the pair fell out over. I just hope that this can be a real step forward for them in their relationship as artists, because, you know, I honestly have to say that I believe that we are better together than we are apart. Which also leads me to my last story from last week that really had me in all of the fields. Let me tell you, I was through the roof last week when I watched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's 30th anniversary reunion on HBO Max. I mean, it took me all the way back. I absolutely love this show, cannot get enough. I've got the DVDs. It was just perfect to see the cast come back together. And first off, I feel like I know that I'm getting old because when your favorite show is celebrating 30 years, you know that means that you're getting older yet wiser, don't get it twisted, because I was floored. I could see myself in front of the television not missing a beat when the show came on television. And it was part of the reason why I wanted to work in this industry despite the fact that I don't work in scripted, but it was great to see, you know, Will Smith, Alfonso Riviero, Daphne Reed, Tatiana Ali, Karen Parsons, and Joseph Marcel and of course DJ Jazzy Jeff coming together in what feels like a long time and really reminiscing about the show and how we realized that they were all a family on set. What they gave us on that television screen was real until the very end, including James Avery may his soul rest in peace. And I know that so many other people that watched the reunion last week had the same feels and were going back and watching the sitcom and really enjoying themselves as we take that step back into that nostalgia moment, that feel good, which is what I feel we all need at this time as we're going through this pandemic and quarantining at home. So it was absolutely perfect. I'm obsessed. I cannot get enough. And in watching this reunion, what really, really warmed my heart, and it probably did the same for you, was that the fact that Will opted to bring back Janet Huber, who is the OG Aunt Viv, and she sat down for an honest conversation about her leaving the show. There have been so many rumors and the beef and the bad blood over the years. Ooh, hold up. My nose is running. Give me two seconds. Uh-uh, really? Really? You gonna be like that? You gonna be like that? Like, I feel like I'm crying at this point. Because, I mean, that was definitely a moment. I mean, it had been 27 years since Janet had seen Will. And we really kind of delved into why she had left the show. And I feel like hopefully everybody can put it to bed. You know, at the time they were in their third season and Janet was pregnant with, you know, who in the show became little Nikki and being able to see, you know, her through that final season was, you know, a time that was hard for her personally. She was, of course, pregnant, like I mentioned. 
um, you know, the writers were writing her less into the script for the following season, and that also included her pay being, you know, reduced significantly for that potential fourth season with her. Let alone, she was in an abusive marriage, and her husband was unemployed, so you know, seemed like at the time she was the caregiver for her family and to know that she was being just really sucked. And it always reminds us to A, stick to your guns, know your worth. Um, as my mother and my sister will always say, ask not, have not, because the money is there and they'll give it to you. Of course, if, you know, you are going to really work hard and everything. I know that the money's there and you just gotta keep pushing, knocking on those doors until they say yes to you. Remember that, until they say yes, keep pushing. So knowing that she was struggling personally was tough and I'm so glad that they were able to, you know, rekindle their friendship and that we now really know that she was never fired from the sitcom, but passed on the opportunity to continue on, which much respect for her, because I know that had to be a hard thing to do. And for her and her career, it, it's, you know, has its probably ebbs and flows. But now um, that we have clarity, hopefully Shonda Rhimes can hopefully make her her own show somehow. Somebody, call Issa, somebody. We need to get Janet back on the screen in a lead role making the money that she deserves because black women need to be paid accordingly. Please remember that. I mean, you know, we all remember that famous dance scene. And an A one. is versatile she can do it all and I, I honestly feel that this is going to be a big change for her life and I'm so excited to see what is coming next so all I can say is I hope that she can land that lead role I've got my fingers crossed for you Janet because I know that the universe is already working in your favor girl heck all right that's enough for this week right we done we finished we out of here it's over okay Essence done, so I'm done. And that's a wrap for this week's 411. I'm your girl, Cyan Taylor. I would love to hear your thoughts on last week's story, so please leave your comments in the comment section. Please, no filter. Tell me what you feel about the versus battle, the Fresh Prince coming back, and of course, the Megan Thee Stallion dropping that body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. And of course, the album itself, good news. I uh, know that we are all currently fighting COVID-19, please stay safe. Prayers out to Jeremiah who revealed that he's currently battling the virus. Wear a mask, people, and stand your damn butt at home. See you next week. Bye.